Now, we, we, we heard about a horse going into battle. That makes perfect sense. But bringing Daffy Duck, Howard Duck, Donald Duck into battle of World War II, you're going to have to make it make sense to me. Let's see what this is talking about. This is probably the most Marine Corps story I've ever heard in my entire life. And there's absolutely into no the way Marines that it's too? been embellished. There's no way. Like a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've already talked about the Marine Corps' most famous animal hero, Sergeant Reckless. The horse that was adopted by the Marines during Bruh, the Korean- A horse with cannons strapped to- come on, man. That sound like- that sound like something from Attack on Titan, I ain't gonna lie. In war that would go on to become the hero of Outpost Vegas and the first horse to ever partake in a Marine Corps amphibious landing. But before Sergeant Reckless, the Marine Corps had another hero from the animal kingdom that partook in multiple amphibious landings in the Pacific theater of World War II. Today, we're talking about Sergeant Seawash, aka the devil duck but first the a word for our sponsor. this video is brought to you by delete me delete me is an online subscription service it's a very straightforward simple business you give them money they get rid of your personal information off the internet okay look here's That's the deal fired. somehow some way your personal information is on the internet your name your spouse's name your parents name your address your last five addresses your phone numbers and all of your emails are all sitting in some data brokers bank and they're selling that information for money but the That's good crazy. news is that these data brokers are legally required to delete your information if you submit an opt-out request and that's where delete me comes in they will go to all the big data brokers and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf i might need to delete me i ain't gonna lie and i know what you're thinking because i thought the same thing i don't want to give all my personal information to delete me either because that just seems counterproductive okay here's the thing with that you don't have to give them all your private information you can literally give them your name and your email address you can give them more information if you want but really all they need is your name and email and then you come back a few days later and they just start asking you a bunch of yes or no questions by using just your name and email they'll search through all the data banks and figure out who you are and they'll ask you a bunch of weird questions like is this your dad is this your mom is that a relative is this your ad is this ancestry.com address did you used to live here did you grow up at this address is this your phone number is this your email they know all of this information just by you giving them your name and email using all the information that these data mm. brokers have and then you just let them know yes that's me and then they will delete all that information for you a couple days after that they're going to send you a report here was mine over 70 data brokers had my information and there were 489 mm. listings where that information was for sale and delete me submitted opt-out requests for all of them now those data brokers are probably going to be able to get my information again but delete me is constantly going to be searching for my info and automatically submitting the requests as soon as those listings pop up go check out delete me i'll have a link in the discount code down below let's get back to the video our story begins in 1942 as the second marine division is currently in new zealand gearing up to go into combat against the japanese in world war ii and like all great military stories it totally happened it begins in a bar with a bunch of marines drinking and as is tradition with the military drinking at a bar there are conflicting reports as to what actually happened according to the marine corps okay. the marines went out to a local bar in new zealand they then started drinking with the locals and they all had a great, very professional, cordial time where they all drank a very appropriate amount of alcohol, potentially even a Surgeon General recommended amount. <laughs> And then none of the Marines went out and hooked up with any of the local women. And if they That's did, cat. hypothetically, which they didn't, but if they did, it would have been strictly in the missionary position and the Marines would have used protection. Now, while they were at the bar, there was also a raffle. And apparently a bunch of the Marines bought these tickets for this raffle. And one of the Marines by the name of Sergeant Francis Fagan ended up winning the raffle. Now, the grand prize for was this raffle duck? at a bar in New Zealand was apparently a duck. That's crazy. And that's what the Marine Corps says happened. Now, according to the other sources, mostly the personal accounts of the Marines that were actually there, and quite frankly, common sense, says that the Marines were at this local bar partying their faces off like they were about to go into the biggest armed conflict the world has ever seen. And while they were there, some of the Marines were playing poker with the locals, and the Marines apparently took all of their money, and they came back to the table, and they're like, all right, well, here's my prize duck. I'm going to put that up as a wager. And the Marine Corps ended up winning that too. And that, again, was Sergeant Francis Fagan, a.k.a happy now personally i'm gonna go ahead and err on the side of the marines got hammered at a bar and won a duck in a poker game and the chain of command didn't want to get in trouble for associating the marine corps with gambling so they just made up some weird shit like apparently bars in new zealand raffle off ducks but you can go ahead and just dog who bet a duck who put a duck on a table and what was it worth like look, look i'm gonna slide in i'm all in with my three hundred thousand dollars worth of chips okay and somebody pull out a freaking duck and place it on the table how much is that supposed to cost? Decide to believe whatever you want. <laughs> Regardless, either way, Francis Fagan, and by extension, the Marine Corps now has a duck. So what are the Marines going to do with a duck? Obviously, they take it under their wing. The dooch. I'd like to apologize to the internet for making you a dad. What? I mean, 
To be fair, that is true. I kind of turned her into a bodybuilder for like 18 months between the two kids. Wow. <laughs> Interrupting my history time. Sorry about that. Anyways, the Marines pretty much immediately teach this duck how to drink beer, which I know what you're thinking. That's probably not very healthy for the duck. Yeah, but not fair, at all. There are worse vices to have. I mean, he could get addicted to quack. What is I'm, quack? I'm sorry. What is that? I'm done. Okay, I'm done with the dad jokes. That joke was foul. Anyways, they become drinking buddies with this duck. He becomes one of the Marines, and then time comes for them to all go off to war and actually engage with the Japanese. Sure enough, they take the duck with them. Fast forward <laughs> November 1943, the Battle of Tarawa. It's one of the bloodiest battles in Marine Corps history. Essentially, the Japanese have 4,000 soldiers dug in and heavily fortified on the Tarawa Atoll, and the Marines have to go in there and take them out. Now, what's unique about Tarawa is it is surrounded by coral reefs, and what that means is any traditional landing craft that America could use, like a Higgins boat, similar to what we used it over couldn't the get European, close would get hung up on these coral reefs and yep. the Japanese would be able to spray it with machine gun fire and for artillery duck? and mortars and kill absolutely That's a everybody. decent price, the though. The Japanese were so confident in these coral reefs and their fortified defenses that Admiral Shimasaki said that it would take a million men a hundred years to take Tarawa. But he didn't know that the Marine Corps had the LVT, the Landing Vehicle Tracked, a.k.a. the Amphibious Tractor, similar to a Higgins mm. boat, except it had tracks on it, and then when it hit the coral reefs, it would simply drive right over the top of them. So on November 20th, Oh, that's fire. 43 at 3 a.m. under the cover of darkness, 18,000 Marines and one duck would load into their salamander tractors as they prepared to launch their amphibious <laughs> landing at the quack of dawn. As dawn broke, the Japanese soldiers the watched of dawn the American crazy. landing crafts did not get hung up on the reefs, but simply drove right over the top of them. The only surviving Japanese officer from this battle, Kiyoshi Ota, would later go on to write, We could see the American landing craft coming towards us like dozens of spiders over the surface of the water. As one of my men exclaimed, the gods of death have come. As the Marines reached the beach, they would That's become pinned down from heavy machine gun, artillery, and mortar fire. They were only able to secure the first 70 yards of the beach after hours of combat. It is at this point that the Marines' front line was charged by an enemy rooster, and Sergeant Seawash charged past the Marine line to meet the chicken in winged combat in the middle of the battlefield. After sustaining several pecks to the head, Seawash was able to repel the enemy ambush and save his fellow Marines. The Marines what? would then go on in the following days to completely take over the island. The Japanese believed that it would take a million men a hundred years. In reality, it took 18,000 Marines and one devil duck 72 hours. That's... For sustaining multiple peck wounds on the battlefield, the Marines tried to get Seawash the Purple Heart. Unfortunately, that wasn't going to work out, but the chain of command still cited Seawash for bravery on the battlefield. That citation, written by Lieutenant Colonel Presley M. Brexley, is as follows. For courageous action and wounds received on Tarawa and the Gilbert Islands. Hold on, so the duck really fought a chicken? That's what happened? They sent the chicken over there? <clears throat> and the duck gave it hands? November 1943, with utter disregard for his own personal safety, Seawash, upon reaching the beach without hesitation, engaged the enemy in fierce combat, namely one rooster of Japanese ancestry. And though wounded on the head by... Why was the Japanese running around with a rooster? Dog. Repeated pecks, he soon routed his opposition. He then refused medical aid until all wounded members of his section had been taken care of first. Seawash and his fellow Marines would then see battle again at the Battle of Saipan, also known as the D Day of the Pacific. However, allegedly due to some intel, there would be no enemy poultry on the beach, so Seawash's services were no longer needed, and he would remain on the boat for the initial three days of the battle. After that, he would go ashore and support his fellow Marines. At the conclusion of the Battle of Saipan, the Marines had gained valuable intel regarding the neighboring island of Tinian, and they would immediately launch another attack to gain that <laughs> island as well, and this time, the Devil Duck would partake in the amphibious landing. From there, he would identify an enemy duck that he would engage in build combat until forcing it to finally retreat. A couple of days after that, the Marines would take the island entirely, and shortly after that, Sergeant Seawash would lay an egg. Apparently, Seawash and the other duck I mentioned a minute ago were doing a little bit more than just fighting. Either way, at this point, the Marines <laughs> now realize that Sergeant Seawash is in fact a girl, to which they're like, A woman! Treacherous snake. Oh, they Just treated kidding. like they my lie. In reality, they were probably giving each other a hard time. Like, all right, who did it? Fess up. Tania would be the last time that Sergeant Seawash ever saw combat. After World War II, she would end up getting sent back home to America with her fellow Marines and her primary caretaker, Francis Fagan. From there, the story about of Sergeant her child, Seawash picked up right? traction, being in Time Magazine, having multiple radio appearances, being in a bunch of different newspapers, telling the harrowing story of America's one and only devil duck. And while all that's going on, she is partying her bill off with her Marines, drinking beer after beer, while also helping the Marines hit on young women. And I actually believe this to be the first <laughs> historical appearance 
appearance of the term wingman being used in relation to picking up women. Okay, I mean, look at this. Fagin and Seawash have more game than an Xbox. That man's about to get more <laughs> than an animal shelter. Over the next couple months, the publicity would die down and Francis Fagin- All right, it's time to get a duck, chat. It's time to get a duck. We're hitting the streets with a duck would go on to become an electrician and his great grandson would also go on to become an electrician that had a pretty decent sized youtube channel no i'm just kidding i'm not related to this guy anyways uh, <laughs> sergeant seawash would also then go to live on a farm for an extended period of time until being called back into duty during the korean war where she helped with recruiting efforts after that she would finally recruiting. retire to live out the rest of her days in the lincoln park zoo in chicago before what, what, what was the duck recruiting okay was it helping recruit um uh participants for the soldiers you know what i'm saying is that is that what the duck was used for it had to be for passing away in 1953 due to liver complications which prompted the marines to release a statement saying that there is no reason to believe that her liver complications were due to her excessive amount of drinking during that's what i'm saying service. Come on, according bro. to multiple newspapers her funeral service was then held in a taxidermy shop where she was then stuffed and currently resides in the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Triangle, Virginia. So in conclusion, this has been the totally real, 100% not embellished whatsoever story of Sergeant C. Wash, AKA America's Devil Duck. <laughs> that time the Marine Corps won a duck in a poker game, taught it how to drink beer, then took it to multiple amphibious landings in the deadliest battles of World War II, kept it alive the- Bro, America's really trolling, bro. America's trolling. They had to be. They bring in ducks to, to, to war and winning wars that people took say it would take a hundred years with a million men freaking trolls bro entire time to bring it back home so they could use it to hit on women and i think it is the most marine corps thing that has ever happened and if i'm wrong you can tell me down below and if your story's better i'll do a video on that too thank you for watching best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com quack bang out mm -mm. all right listen listen um uh, Sergeant Reckless versus uh, the Devil Duck. Which one was more valuable? All right. Obviously, Sergeant Sergeant Reckless was running in there with with, with uh, carrying loads, pause, into the battlefield, cannon strapped to his to his legs, firing on enemies. But the duck was helping the soldiers get that. You know what I'm saying? So, which one are we going with? I don't know. I'm going. I'm going with Sergeant Reckless, bro. Team Sergeant Reckless, y'all could take the Devil Duck if y'all want. Uh, probably had like 30 HP, but his hitbox is very small, though. Okay, but the value is very little. I, uh, it depends on what you value, but um, yeah.